65. The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Now Venus is a gorgeous girl, but life for her is rough. A statue simply cannot smoke a lucky puff by puff. I drive a cab in my hometown, I know what people like. That milder, richer cigarette whose name is Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Enjoy your cigarette. Enjoy truly fine tobacco that combines both perfect mildness and rich taste in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. For only fine tobacco gives you both real mildness and rich taste. And LSMFT... Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So, friends, be happy. Go lucky. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy. Go lucky. Be happy. Go lucky. Strike. Be happy. Go lucky. Go lucky. Strike today. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday we had rehearsal. About noon, Jack, Phil, Dennis, and I walked across the street to the corner drugstore for some lunch. Gee, the drugstore's crowded today. Yeah, I hope it doesn't take too long. Hey, Merv, you got a table for us? No, but there'll be one empty in a minute. Would you mind waiting? No, but bring a chair for the old man. He walked all the way across the street. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being funny. For your information, Phil, every morning right after breakfast, I walk five miles all over Beverly Hills. Why do you do that, Jack? He's collecting rent. <laughs> That's only on the first of the month. Hey, look, Jackson, as long as we have to wait, I want to buy some things at the drug counter. Will you hold a seat for me? Okay. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Harris? Look, I want a large tube of toothpaste, some aspirin, a bottle of mouthwash, and uh, a box of bobby pins. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, what color is your wife's hair? Blonde, but she buys her own. <laughs> Very good, Mr. Harris. Uh, will there be anything else? Yeah, now let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, I better get some cough drops. I've had a tickling in my throat since last night. Well, maybe it's a piece of cork. <laughs> now, uh, what kind of cough drops do you want? Oh, I don't care. Just give me a box of those that are made right here in L.A. L.A.? Yeah, it says so right on the box. Los Angeles. That's lozenges. <laughs> Oh, oh. Your table is ready, Mr. Benny. Okay, I'll get the others. Phil! Right here, Jackson. Dennis! Oh, just a second, Mr. Benny. I'm weighing myself. How much do you weigh, Dennis? 370 pounds. <laughs> 370 pounds? I invited Don to be my guest. <laughs> well, what good is... Oh, never mind. Come on, kids. Let's get to the table. Hey, Marvin, we're in a hurry to get back to rehearsal, so give us quick service, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Benny, I'll take the orders myself. Good. What do you have, fellas? I'll have a chicken sandwich on rye bread. Yes, sir. You, Mr. Wilson? Oh, I'll have a small glass of tomato juice and a slice of whole wheat toast. Don. Don, is that all you're eating? Yeah, Jack, I'm on a diet, and that's all I've had for three full days. Dennis, where are you going? When he's that hungry, I don't, I don't want to be close to him. <laughs> Oh, sit down. Yes, sir. What do you have, Mr. Day? I'll have a cucumber split. <laughs> uh, a cucumber split? What in the name of Duncan Hines is that? <laughs> well, it's like a banana split, only you use a cucumber. <laughs> then is ice cream on a cucumber? That must taste awful. Oh, not if you peel it. <laughs> Well, 
his answer was all right, maybe my question was silly. <laughs> How he can eat that, I don't know. Yeah? What do you have, Mr. Benny? Let's see. I want to look at the sandwich list. Hamburger, cheeseburger, chicken burger, onion burger, turkey burger, chili burger, Max burger. <laughs> Max burger? What's that? That's a proprietor. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what to order. Why don't you try a cucumber split? Dennis, if I live to be a hundred, I'll never eat a thing like that. It sounds horrible. If you haven't tried it, don't knock it. <laughs> oh, keep quiet. Yeah, I don't know what to eat. I just haven't any appetite. Yeah, I haven't felt like eating all day. Don't take it personally, Jackson. They raised everybody's taxes today. <laughs> I know, I know. Mervyn, I'll have a bacon and tomato sandwich. Yes, sir. What do you gentlemen have to drink? Coffee for me. I'll have a Coca-Cola. Bring me three fingers of milk. <laughs> Phil, Phil, three fingers of milk? I'm on the wagon, but I don't want to forget how to order. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, by the way, Jackson, uh, Remley asked me to thank you for the raise you gave him. That's all right, Phil. Anytime your music is improved, I appreciate it. Why, Jack, what'd Frankie do? He broke his arm and he can't play. <laughs> What a nice guy. Yeah. How'd Frankie break his arm, Phil? Well, we were having a little party at Bagby's house, and it was a warm night, so Frankie ran out and took a dive in the pool. Oh, no water in the pool, eh? No pool. <laughs> well, no wonder he broke his arm. He didn't do that till the third dive. <laughs> what? He swam around the backyard like a mole. <laughs> Oh, fine. <laughs> Here's your food, gentlemen. Thanks. Now, eat, let's eat fast, kids, so we can get back to rehearsal. Well, Jack, look who's walking over here. Why, it's Mr. Kitzel. Hello, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Kitzel. Have some lunch with us. No, thank you. I eat already. <laughs> I had the blue plate special. Hoo-hoo, a bargain. <laughs> you mean you, you didn't like it? Who could like it? Such small portions they give you. Six green beans, two potato chips, and a piece of steak. J. Edgar Hoover couldn't find it. <laughs> well, that, that's too bad. Too bad. If it wasn't for the dessert, the whole meal would be awful. Oh, what'd you have for dessert? A cucumber split. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, you didn't... Well, maybe it's good. I don't know. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. I got to run along now. I got to pick up my boy and take him to his scout meeting. Oh, oh, is your son a boy scout? Is he a boy scout? <laughs> Only two weeks ago, he joined, and when I asked him, what did you learn, he rubbed together two sticks and burned down the whole house. <laughs> burned down the house? Uh-huh. When the fireman came, he helped them across the street. No. Uh-huh, and with his little knife, he carved, be prepared, in their fire hose. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. So long, Mr. Kitzel. <laughs> well, fellas, we better get going, too. We got a lot of rehearsing to do. Here's your check, gentlemen. Oh, I'll take it, fellas. I think it's my turn. No, no, Dennis, it's my turn. Oh, no, 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 Phil, it's my turn. No, no, Don, it's Phil's turn. <laughs> I keep track of these things. Now, come on, let's go. Dennis, what are you doing at the jukebox? Oh, one of my songs is on it, and I want to play it. 
Well, go ahead and then come right to the studio. Okay. Got a nickel? No! <laughs> now, let's go, fellas. Don, have you got the scripts there? Yes, Jack. Come on, Jack. I want to get home. Let's get the rehearsal started. Phil, we can. Mary isn't here yet. Is there anything wrong with her? I don't know. I, I hope she's feeling all right. How'd she look this morning when you collected her rent? <laughs> <laughs> she was all right. She was a little concerned about the controls going off, but then I don't blame her, you know. I'm going to call her up and see what's keeping her. Oh, my ball. What is it, guy says? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is working. Yeah, I wonder what Born to be Bad wants now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll plug in and find out. Yes, Mr. Benny. Yes, sir, I'll see if she's home. He wants I should get him Mary Livingston. I'll try her number. Say, guy says, you think there's a romance between Mr. Benny and Miss Livingston? Could be. On the first program of the season, I saw Mary wearing an orchid he gave her. Well, what makes you so sure Mr. Benny gave it to her? It's the same one he let me wear on New Year's. <laughs> he keeps it in a deep freeze. <laughs> uh, come to think of it, Gertrude, there could be something between Jack and Mary because... Thursday night when I was at the Mocambo, I saw them there together. Gee, you were at the Mocambo? Yeah. Who took you? Nobody. I went stag. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not ahead of me. I went to the Mocambo once, too, and with Jack. Jack Benny. Then you didn't go stag? No, I went Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you know, Mabel, you should see the change that's come over him since he came back from Europe. He's so continental. Now when he sees you, he bends from the waist and kisses your hand. <laughs> My, how romantic. Yeah. But you gotta straighten him up faster. He stays that way all the time. Are you just kidding? No, it happened the night we went to the Macombo. And 
he was bent over all evening. How could you dance with them? It was awful. When the music started, he came at me like a USC fullback. <laughs> if you hadn't played for Notre Dame, you'd have been in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Operator, operator. I'm sorry, Mr. B, but Miss Livingston's line doesn't answer. Oh, well, never mind. I'll call her later. See, fellas, Mary's phone doesn't answer. I wonder where she is. Maybe she was drafted. <laughs> oh, be quiet! <laughs> Look, fellas, let's rehearse until... She... Come in! Mr. Benny, you want it on the phone in the hall. Oh, excuse me, fellas, maybe that's Mary. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> Hello, Rochester. What is it? Brace yourself, boss. I've got news for you. What is it, Rochester? What is it? Your car's been stolen. <laughs> My car stolen? This is awful. There's two schools of thought on that. <laughs> Rochester, I'm in no mood for jokes. Is my car really stolen? Yes, boss. It's gone. Oh, this is terrible. Just yesterday, I put in five gallons of gas. <laughs> Ethel yet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What are you going to do, boss? Well, don't worry, Rochester. I'll get my car back. The Beverly Hills police are on their toes. They could be on their knees and catch that car. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Just meet me at the police station. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, uh, was that, uh, Mary, Jack? No, Don, it was Rochester. What do you think happened, fellas? What? My car was stolen. Your car? Yes. Gee, and only yesterday you drove me home and made me put in five gallons of gas. <laughs> then. Ethel, yes. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, look, fellas, rehearsal is off. I gotta get down to the police station. Now, where's the quartet? Oh, sportsman, sportsman! <laughs> Did you hear the news? Someone stole Mr. Benny's car. <laughs> Someone stole Jack Benny's car and drove it right away. It makes us feel so very sad, we just can't help but say, Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. People call me Madman Munch, with them I can't agree. The guy who stole Jack Benny's car is crazier than me. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. My name is Ronald Coleman, and I live next door to Jack. I hope the man who stole that can will never bring it back. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. My name is Mr. Cassidy, to you I'm known as Hoppy. My horse can't understand who'd steal that broken down jalopy. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. My name is Woody Woodpecker, I laughed the whole day through. And since they stole Jack Benny's car, I've got a reason to. <laughs> Well, here it is, Beverly Hills Police Station. What a classy place. Look at that sign over the door. Through these portals pass the toughest policeman in the world. <laughs> Uniforms by Adrian. <laughs> well, I'd better go in. I wonder where I... Oh, there's a girl at that desk. i better ask her. Oh, miss? Yes? I'd like to report a stolen car. Do you have an appointment? 
No, no, I just want to report a stolen car. Well, we're not very busy today. Perhaps we can work you in. Well, good, good. <laughs> uh, you may go to the office on the right and see Sergeant Vandermeer. Well, thank you. Uh, Sergeant Vandermeer? Uh, yes? I'd like to report that my car was stolen. Uh, do you live in Beverly Hills? Yes, yes, I do. What kind of a Cadillac was it? <laughs> Well, it, it isn't a Cadillac. Uh, a Lincoln? Well, uh, come, come, mister, what kind of car is it? It's a, a, a Maxwell. <laughs> From what country? <laughs> no, no, you see, it was made in this country. That is, well, they don't make them anymore, although the factory is still in existence. They make pencil sharpeners. <laughs> <laughs> they had some cranks left over, so it was easy to convert. <laughs> I see. Now, uh, tell me, from where was your car stolen? Well, boss! Oh, hello, Rochester. The girl at the desk told me you were in here. Oh, Sergeant, this is my butler, Rochester Van Jones. He discovered the theft. Oh, the butler, eh? <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Van Jones. Huh? Now recount in your own words the events of the entire day. Well... Don't be nervous, Rochester. I'll stand behind you. Well, Mr. Benny left the house at 10 o'clock. He called me out of my room and said, Rochester, I'll be gone all day, so I want you to clean the kitchen, beat the rugs, wash the windows, polish the stove, wax the floors, and press my clothes. That's right, that's right. I remember telling him to do all those things, and I left at 10 o'clock. Now, Rochester, where were you at 10.15? Back in my room, asleep. <laughs> Asleep, Rochester. Be quiet, quiet, Mr. Bennett. Tell me, Rochester, when did you first discover that the car was stolen? I heard the motor as it went out the driveway. Oh, I see. You were sleeping, but you just happened to wake up in time to hear the motor. I didn't just happen to wake up, it threw me out of bed. <laughs> Now, look here. Uh, just I... a minute, minute, Sergeant. You're suspecting the wrong man. Y yes. Yes, I guess I am. It always happens. For 20 years, I've been listening to mystery programs on the radio, and it's always the butler. Always the butler. They drive you nuts. Why do I keep listening to them? Why? I ask. Why? 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 <laughs> Sergeant, control yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes, I must control myself. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, yes, your car was stolen. Have it here on the report. Make, Maxwell. That's right. Will you give me a description, please? Well, it has a black body with blue fenders. That is, two of them are blue, and one is green, you see? Uh, what about the fourth one? Well, the color of that one changes. It's made out of lizard skin. <laughs> Any other identification? Well, there's a foxtail hanging rather casually over the, you know, from the radiator cap. And now let me see what else. Oh, yes, the, the top goes up and down, you see. Oh, oh, a convertible. No, the top just goes up and down. <laughs> That's right. You see, we have no windshield to fasten it to, and it's uncomfortable wearing that chin strap, you know. <laughs> Uh, we'd better not waste any more time, Mr. Benny. Now, if you'll just follow me, we'll go down to the radio room and report the theft to our prowl cars. Just follow me. Come on, Rochester. See, look at those pictures on the wall. Dillinger, pretty boy Floyd. Oh, look, there's a picture of my agent. <laughs> yeah, I hope I get my car back. Don't worry, Mr. Benny. We'll not only locate your car, but we'll apprehend the criminal. You see, we'll take fingerprints off the steering wheel. Well, maybe you ought to get the fingerprints off the door handle. Why? We haven't got a steering wheel. <laughs> That's ridiculous. What do you do when you get to a corner? How do you make a turn? We jump out and kick the front wheel. <laughs> Rochester. When we get the car thing circled, we go crazy. <laughs> Rochester, please. Well, here's the radio room. Oh, before we go in, Mr. Benny, have you thought of a reward? Well, no. If I just get my car back, it'll be enough. <laughs> Very well. This way. 
Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Go to 700 North Rexford. See the man about a disturbance. This is Johnson. That is all. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Go to the corner of Doheny and Wilshire, code 62. Carey speaking. That is all. Now, Mr. Benny, which one of our announcers would you prefer to broadcast the information about your missing car? <laughs> Lieutenant Johnson or Sergeant Carey? Uh, what's the difference? Well, Sergeant Carey has a higher hooper. <laughs> <laughs> More of our prowl cars listen to him. Really popular, really popular, eh? Popular? <laughs> CBS wants to star him in a program called People Are Crooked. <laughs> Oh, what do you know? Sergeant, tell him to send out the alarm about my car. Uh, certainly. Here, Carrie, add this one to your list. Yes, sir. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Keep a lookout for these stolen vehicles. Hudson, license number WY7469, Cadillac, DE3327, Maxwell, PU8054. <laughs> Gee, I hope they find it soon. That is all. Good night, Irene. <laughs> Gosh, if I don't get my car back, I don't know what I'm going oh, to Mr. do. Oh, Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny. Dennis, what are you doing here? Oh, I had to see you, Mr. Benny. Are you sure somebody stole your car? Of course I'm sure. Why? Well, when I left the studio, I went home. Uh-huh. And when I went into the house, I said, Hello, Mother, somebody stole Mr. Benny's car. And then it happened. What happened? She filled me full of black coffee, put an ice bag on my head, and called Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> Alcoholics Anonymous? I go to my first meeting next Tuesday. What? I could go on Thursdays, but I'd rather go with Phil. <laughs> well, you can tell your mother... Car 28 calling in. Car 28 calling in. This may be it, Mr. Benny. This report may concern your car. Oh, good, good. Okay, car 28, come in. We found the Maxwell, license number PU8054. That's it, that's it. The car was found at 360 North Camden Drive. That's my house. They brought it back. <laughs> Watch that. Did you hear that? They brought it back. They this, brought it back. This is the third time. Yeah. <laughs> quiet, quiet, please. Tell me, Car 28, did you apprehend the criminal? Only the one that was limping. The other one got away. You say one of them was limping? Did you shoot him? No, his toe was broken from kicking the front wheel. <laughs> Well, how do you like that? They must have gone by way of Carthay Circle. Come on, Rochester, let's go home. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. In science and biology, in math and chemistry, there never was a formula like LSMFT. Yes, luckies get our loudest cheers on campus and on dates. With college gals and college guys, a lucky really race. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Yes, friends, be happy, go lucky, enjoy your cigarette. For luckies always give you perfect mildness. In fact, scientific tests confirmed by three independent consulting laboratories prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand. And together with mildness, you always get rich taste, too. All the deep-down smoking enjoyment that comes from truly fine tobacco. For LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So, friends, be happy. Go lucky. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Look, Rochester, the thieves did bring my car back. There it is in front of the house. Yeah. See, I hope they didn't damage it. Jump in, Rochester, see if it'll start. Okay. <laughs> Listen to it, Rochester. Listen. Yeah, it was just as good as ever. It certainly is. Good night, folks. Be sure to hear Dennis Day on the day in the life of Dennis Day. 
Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy Show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.